разрешите представить. Please let me introduce Vadim Yatsenko and Sergey Kim. Greetings to everyone. My name is Vadim. This is my colleague Sergey, and today we will speak about a topic that creates many holy wars. And I hope you will accept our opinion, and we want to share the experience in uh, use of high availability clusters for enterprise of our product. And in the beginning, we want to say a, pair of, a couple of words about our company. Our company, Ingram Micro, is not uh, uh, widely presented in the Russian market, although it's relatively great company. We have more than 1,400 staff members and our division in Moscow and the second division in Novosibirsk is responsible for cloud, Ingram MicroCloud. How do we earn? We develop platform, cloud platform, and you, that is used for uh, IT companies, hosters, uh, huge telecoms to sell their cloud services. So if imagine if you are Microsoft and you want to sell your office 365, you have many possibilities. How it was done late, earlier, you sold your CD uh, your client installed the program uh, on the computer, on the PC, and now it's not working like this. So therefore we are uh, on the market. Our main clients are the, such companies like Vodafone, Telecom Italy, Telmex, the Mexican Telecom, and so on. So, as you can imagine, we have uh, huge clients. We are represented in uh, all continents, although not in an Antarctic. Antarctic. So, I would like to tell you about the features of enterprise and the difference of enterprise and the, your project that you are developing, that you have one project or several installations. So, what are the main um, challenges when you work on a project that you are developing and or leading in the frames of uh, one of your offices. You have at every time engineers who understand what the product, what is the product that you're working with. You have DBAs who know how to serve, how to provide maintenance. You have online access to logs and monitoring and so on. That means your response time is uh, relatively low. But if you are creating some product, if you are uh, transferring the product to some enterprise, you encounter problems. In 95% of cases, you won't get access to logs, to some monitoring data and so on. Everything that you will release as a pro into the project will be like a bullet. You have only one shot, only one bullet. Then you can only correct it in the next releases. And uh, this is the subject for uh, limitations. It happens that together with Sergey, I am working in uh, clusters. And I wanted to say what what's HE. A ah, high availability cluster. So we're not pretending that we have the full information or the full realization of the problem. This is just a failover and fail black, fail black. Resilience to all the possible network partitioning problems. We're solving the split brain problem and it's a challenge, a huge challenge. And the challenge of data consistency and availability. So generally speaking, if we sum it up, we have only the cap theorem problem, the consistency, availability, and the partitioning. So correspondently, the first thing that was 
uh, analyzed several years ago was PG Pool. It was very interesting, very promising, and I think Sergey will now explain us how did he fought with this instrument, how did he contact the Japanese colleagues in the nights. So how was it? Yeah, dear colleagues, before I start to explain, I want to say that there is no negative, there are objective data that we want to present to you with, together with Vadim. The ones who tried to build, who, uh, who built uh, uh, on the basis of uh, Postgres started the work from the Google. At first you Google how to build uh, HA cluster and I think PG pool is the case uh, in everyone's practice. We will not uh, explain to you the apologies of high availability. Uh, we will just uh, go to the essence. We don't have so much time. The main characteristics of the feature uh, provided by PG pool is our load balancing, that means we're not taking the uh, general TCP forwarding of ports, we're speaking about balancing of uh, SQL levels. This is uh, the thing that has that is presented at PG pool and uh, only at PG pool. Then uh, we have Watchdog, and if you have the experience uh, of introduction and uh, of this is the other watchdog. This is the watchdog in the terminology of PG Pool. We will speak about it a bit later. Do you hear me? Then the detection uh, between master and slaves and uh, in the replica of Postgres. The query, query replica, replication and uh, master replication. We have application, client application. We have PG Pool it stays before the databases and in the terms of PG pool Postgres is a backend please do remind it because I will use this term later we have also two features of PG pool probably it hibernated but now we are reconnected back online Next is replication of queries. Uh, well, we actually looked at this function but uh, decided not to use it and uh, I'll explain you later on why. And of course, connection pooling. I think this topic, well, it is quite well understood by you. I think you know what pooling connection is and uh, uh, Java developers know what data source is uh, in relation to application servers, and uh, this is more or less the same. Now, load balancing, the most beautiful and tasty feature of PG pooling. What is the essence of it? We have PG pool. Before it, we have a number of application clients. After PG pool, we have backends, Postgres. One of these Postgres is, is master. And uh, it is the Postgres that that uh, takes the writing load apart from reading load. And even in synchronous mode, we have uh, one backend of Postgres that takes all the changes and it is also available for reading. PG pool works with two types of backends. But for one of them, it distributes the writing load and for others, it can send the reading load. How PG pool does it? First, every backend has a weight, and this is a weight based replication, basically. Then, PG pool taking a query from application client A, and um, it actually takes us not uh, in line select one from something, but it uh, takes it on the level of TCP packages. It means that PG pool on its side at its sockets and points fully, and I would like to underscore it, fully emulates Postgres protocol. If you use your favorite uh, GDBC drivers or LBQ, you work with PG pool as if you were working with Postgres DB directly. You have almost complete illusion that uh, there is no PG pool, you have a living Postgres with all its features. 
Now, this balancing is transaction dependent, and if you entered a transaction and send it to via connection to PG Pool, PG Pool will decide internally what it can do to this transaction. If this is a writing query, uh, the writing query will route it to the master backend master of Postgres. If this is a reading query, then depending on uh, on the status of transaction, it will either be routed to the master backend or to the secondary backend uh, that is available, accessible in the synchronous standby mode. Depending on how many queries you have, depending on how often you send them and how often you send connections, you will get a specific performance of your application. How is it calculated? Basically, you get a horizontal scale-out. You have different processors that you stand by replicas of Postgres uh, work on. They take load from PG Pool and the main DB, the main backend. It will work for writing. Of course, taking that Postgres, the master DB is servicing selects and reading query is not reading queries, it is focused on writing load. It can actually process more queries and it is good. During our tests, and please believe us that our application actually uh, it is a system with high load. We saw the uptake of performance by 50 percent. But uh, um, I don't mean that uh, if today our query is run during 30 seconds uh, after applying PG pool, it will be 15 seconds now. But if uh, we have one query for, for 10 seconds, uh, we will be able to process more queries with the same performance. Mm -hmm. Why I mean, why I'm underscoring that we will have the same performance. PG pool is placed between application and backends, and uh, it evokes uh, an overhead. PG pool as a proxy solution, it produces the disassembly of all your packages, all the bytes that go through it, in order to understand what backend this query will be routed to. This is a writing request, reading request, and it actually has a state machine inside, and it uses it to track the status of transaction, whether it's writing, reading, whether we have a writing flag triggered there. And for this logic, PG pool creates additional structures. It manipulates these structures, and that is where it implements our head. Now, let's go back. Unfortunately, the downside of this solution is that uh, as PG pool is responsible for analyzing all the queries it needs it, it introduces this overhead. During our tests, if we run a query to the table using a queue select ID, the customer ID is equal to one, this query will be processed quickly in the back end uh, independently on whether it's synchronous standby or the master, but PG pool will impose constant delay for the quick queries that are processed during milliseconds. We saw that uh, the impact on performance is 25% uh, more of delay. In our logics, well, we didn't regard it as a significant difficulty or problem. But our applications are LTP and uh, their 90% of queries are reading, so writing queries were not impacted. But we had a gain in terms of performance as a scale out that were important for other processors for other backends of Postgres. So this approach has both advantages and downsides. In order to 
phrase PG pool, I can state that there is no similar solution like PG pool that allows you to balance queries not at the level of AHA proxy or Nginx, just putting them through TCP ports uh, using a balancing algorithm. But it actually really maintains balancing. You send a select, and this select PG pool can redistribute to synchronous standby. Then you write update table, your query goes to master Postgres. PG pool defines itself that this is a reading query. And pay attention, opt if you send select, the select will not be sent to standby by PG pool because earlier during the current transaction update has already been received and PG pool put up this flag and the next select will for sure be sent by PG pool to the master Postgres and uh, you'll have consistency in terms of both reading and writing. So load balancing of PG pool, well, it's one of it's one of the most reliable This is the tastiest feature of PG pool, I would put it in English. If you want to balance load, if you want to distribute it between backends, this is what you need. Otherwise, you will be using H proxy and Jinx X proxy. But there you will not have statement balance based balancing. Another important function of PG pool, watchdog. It has been developed recently, it's uh, almost 18 months. What is the essence? If you install PG pool in your infrastructure, you have one rejection point. If there is no PG pool, if there is no proxy, your application clients will lose their access to database. So PG pool developers did the following. They implemented their own watchdog mechanism implemented by them and uh, there it provides a distributed quorum and reaches consensus. So if you install PG pool in the number of in the odd number three, five or seven, uh, you come you end up with an infrastructure where instances of PG pool communicate by means of health checks. Uh, basically, these are VDP packages that uh, they interchange to track their status. Depending on the stars, basically, the situation, one of the instances of PG pool will be selected as master. What it is? It is an instance that is able, has a right to initiate a, a command to, of phrasing to CPA a virtual IP address. This IP address is not tied to any of your servers or any of your virtual instances. This is an IP address uh, that you use to connect your application clients. Instance PG pool masters owns it. If there is a bad event, PG pool master loses its ability to work, the server is down, whatever. The other two survived instances of PG pool implement voting through a set interval. We have two instance PG pools. The previous master PG pool is not there, so they organize voting and select the new master. The new master undertakes to supervise over the whole watchdog mechanism and uh, takes the IP address. This procedure, depending on how you set your PG pool cluster, it takes up to one minute. But uh, sometimes we saw worse scenarios, uh, and I will explain you why a bit later. So your application clients uh, are in the state of a shock during that time, but after the uh, recently voted the recently elected instance PG pool takes the IP address. It asks the reporting servers of Postgres, defines who is master, who is standby, opens, connects, uh, checks their performance, and uh, takes sockets. For example, port four two four five three two. And after that, they are reconnected. If you have the function of reopening the connection 
before Postgres, uh, and then they continue the operation. If you have any other pro problems like uncommitted transactions, PGP will not secure you from that, and uh, your logics will have to respond in some way and uh, perform the rollback of data, reconnect. So what Watchdog does? After loan balancing, I will explain and you will understand what is it. So you have Watchdog, you have a master of instance PG pool that takes the IP address. Unfortunately, this mechanism has a big downside and uh, this solution, unfortunately, cannot be deployed in cloud because cloud providers do not like giving you an IP address which is not tied to anything. So you create an instance, you have an IP address in, in Amazon, you have Elastic IP, you have Elastic Network Interface, but it is not the same. No admin is going to go to client and uh, say that uh, here is your address and you can do anything you want to it. If you, your task is to use PG pool in public cloud, well, think how implementable this scheme is. We could not do that. Another important mechanism that actually is the sum of the possibilities I've already listed. Detection of master and slave. Uh, sorry, we cannot use slave. Uh, it should be standby because the slave is uh, politically incorrect. We haven't yet uh, fully switched to it, sorry. But speaking about HA, in any infrastructure we have uh, the master node and we have the standby node. In the case of disaster, depending on the necessary parameters of RTO, RPO, you need to switch to standby node, which is uh, well, consistent with the main one in some Love at, in some to some extent. It has Postgres instances uh, that are reporting to it, and it sends query to these instances. It opens connect and uh, operations and uh, requests their status. It uses full straw function. PG pool also has follower command written in its settings and basically this is shell script. You can enter pgctl space promote there. Well, this is just exemplary. And uh, to this command, the pg pool will send in the necessary parameters in case of disaster. It will inform what node is down, what node should be defined as master now. But let's go back to the logics. PG pool continuously asks the reporting servers of Postgres and uh, may monitors its status. These are background live checks that require one additional connect in Postgres. And if you have max connections in Postgres as 128, don't forget to put 129. Otherwise, when your database is loaded, you will have false triggers because PGPL will not be able to connect to DB and uh, it will think that uh, it is not working. PGPL actually monitors the status of reporting backends and your application client uh, doesn't care whether Postgres is working or not. It works with PGPL as if that were a Postgres database. and. Uh, as PG pool balances itself, the writing and reading load between reporting backends, well, you put select update, and if at some point your master DB is down, then for a specific time you will have a downtime in your systems. And after some time, 20 to 30 seconds, well, maybe not uh, 20 or 30, maybe 90, seconds, uh, this is according to our settings, your application clients will be reconnected and uh, they will see that the data that they ha are, have committed, they are available, you are providing for consistent readings, but uh, you will not 
know that uh, you actually are working with another instance of Postgres, and this is tasty. This is great. There is a downside of it. If you have several instances of PG pool, not one like at this picture, then when your instance Postgres master is down, instances of PG pool, as they are in quorum, they are going to enter voting to define what which one sees the available backends of uh, Postgres. PGPool had problems. We actually identified those and fixed those problems. The master thought that two reporting backends are working, but the PGPool, which is at the next uh, server room, thinks uh, it thinks that uh, it is dead, and uh, they were conflicting. We were opening these problems at the back tracker of PGPool, and uh, we said that uh, there is a master of pgpool and that removed one in fact it uh, tells the main instance of pgpool that those are dead and in this case we had mm, very unpleasant situations when ha was not present but so we came over this problem the mechanism of failover when re switching to standby instance as follows, uh, when it sees that uh, the instance Postgres is down, it, all the connections with the client is, uh, are closed. Uh, error 500. PGPool in this case overrides the situation and closes the connection. The connection. If uh, the transactions are not committed, if uh, the logic is, is so that uh, the rollback is not possible, well, every all, all that will suffer during the time when PG Pool and its comrades is deciding which DB is uh, living, which DB is down. This is a problem of standby servers of Postgres when they are consistent with the, the master server. Speaking frankly, our tests, auto tests, they are structured for 90 seconds. Uh, they are emulating the death of master Postgres, but sometimes we had uh, the downtime of 10 to 20 minutes, so the situation is not ideal, PGPool is not ideal. So now let's take a look how this mechanism is working in the, the huge details. Classical picture from Google Images, I took it. We have an application client, PGPool, as one single instance, and two backends, master and standby. Everything is great, everything is operating. Our application is sending the SQLs to PGPool and uh, they are forwarded to master instance Postgres when a disaster happens. Like uh, the disaster in cases that PGPool cannot forward this SQLs to the master Postgres. The PG pool is just seeing this. It's the, lo the programming logical in his his its own state machine. So please pay attention. Your application client is not seeing this. It's uh, only s uh, registered by PG pool. In some time, the application begins to see uh, the same pro problem. These are the mistakes from the results uh, set from the opening of connect, rollbacks, commits, and so on. Everything that you can see on the client side. And it happens for a while, and this while depends uh, of how often do you have the health checks, the checks uh, quer queries uh, from opening to Postgres. Then, in so, uh, then, after some time, PGPool sees the situation. When the tests are uh, fall, false, everything is good, everything is great, it's okay. I'm not sarcastic here. PGPool sees that it cannot reach master Postgres. PGPool uh, is not making this anymore. It's uh, combined with timings, with the quantity of reconnects. All the time the client uh, is feeling not well and you also. 
So the checks are not going to the database. The SQL SQLs are not uh, forwarded to the Postgres master. The additional question is what happens with the transactions, and uh, it should be investigated. Pigeapool uh, is not making forwarding now. It interrupts the communication with Postgres master. It's mentioned as down in the status file of Pigeapool. So the status file that's uh, describing the state of the Postgres uh, master. And it opens the connects to standby Postgres. It, uh, is f it is preceded by promotional or by follower. But it all depends. For the whole time, the application client uh, is experiencing faults. And uh, actually, this is, this is one uh, of the saddest situations. So Pigeapool sees that uh, the Postgres uh, is operating in a standby regime. It uh, sees that the new master is uh, not standby, but uh, it uh, changes its status. Your application clients is uh, not uh, is just lying. I don't know what happens with your application. It all depends on your hands. The system lay. The system is down. And imagine your uh, database administration at 2 a.m. Uh, is restoring the logic. The application begins to send the SQL. The pitch pool is the same. It's forwarding the SQLs to the new Postgres. The system is alive again and uh, it's operable. And if we speak about uh, CAP theorem, we have lost the possibility to receive the consistent problem, the consistent copy of Postgres. But after the disaster, we can uh, live with this for uh, some time. Then depending on the, your approach to restore, uh, you can work correspondingly. The next problem is the conceptual case. It's not the PG pool's fault, it's just the physics. We arrived at this issue by our own mistakes, by our own experience uh, and communication with the developments of PG pool. And I beg your pardon, we uh, were doubting that uh, Postgres is uh, really working with, with the ACID ideology. When we encountered with this pro problem, this was a huge wow for us. Just imagine, we have two instance Postgres, one is master, one is synchronous and standby. And to preserve this synchronicity, you just install this synchronous commit uh, uh, line in your Postgres conf file for the synchronous team. What happens? Your application uh, uh, writes SQL, and uh, as you can see, there is no PG pool uh, here on this slide because I am speaking about SQL. Uh, and it doesn't play any role whether you have uh, your own balancer or a PG pool. It's just the physics of this procedure. So your application sends uh, the written SQL to the proxy, like the PG pool. Your proxy server is sending this, uh, is forwarding this to Postgres master because only Postgres master uh, accepts uh, written SQL. The Postgres is uh, storing this information in WAL. Then we start the synchronous replication on the basis of Postgres. Postgres is operating, everything is okay. The standby project uh, Postgres accepts the information into wall. Uh, makes the response to master instant Postgres, it, everyone is happy. So pay attention, the data are in wall, but they are not accessible. So the forward repl replication is done. Postgres 
informed our SQL proxy, like pgpool, for example. And this proxy then uh, provides this information to your client, to your application. Then you write down update table, begin commit, everything goes very well. You are pretty sure that the data is written uh, on the Postgres standby. So it's the information that you receive from SQL proxy. And in one millisecond, your application in the frames of other transaction, also it can be a parallel transaction that was barriered, it sends the read SQL to with the fresh data through the key. And the, your SQL proxy balancer has a full right, because this is the red SQL, it has the full right to forward to standby Postgres instance and it's great job it's okay it should be done like this because we this is the physics of the procedure and instance and Postgres is synchronized the SQL goes to Postgres and here when uh, it uh, needs to return the data you see the prog uh, you see the prog problem because the data that were written previously is not seen there when we encountered this situation we needed 3 days to communicate upon this problem because this problem was also a problem for the developers it was the time of Postgres 9.6, uh, and Postgres 9.6 had the feature, and uh, they showed us the synchronous commit uh, docu documents uh, providing for remote apply. This option tells us that the data on standby instance pons Postgres should be written down not only in the wall during the replication, but they need to be applied to the data. And if we impact performance by this, we will need to encounter this problem. But you need to be ready to the situation, and our test has, has have shown that your performance will fall uh, to 1.5. I don't think I cannot tell you whether it is great or not great, but in our test we understood that this is not acceptable for us. So this slide is also very important, uh, very interesting. There are 10 points and of course there should be more of them. These are the problems that we have found at PGPool and that were covered by the masters. But we have uh, also something that was not fixed until the end. You just need to understand that this is a long table. You please do not read it in details. So, PGPool, pros and cons. Of course, it has pros, adequate, tasty pros and cons also. And now at our company, we're thinking uh, of whether we will go to a future with PGPool or not. So, we don't have much time left and I will show the next slides very rapidly so the question was what shall be done we were googling for the answers searching for them and here on the slide you can see uh, not the full list of the solutions but this is what we were uh, thinking of Something was studied more, something was studied less, and in the end we just thought that it would be easier for us to assess usability of Postgres. What is the architecture of Postgres? We just wanted to take a closer look at it. We've studied the features of Postgres and uh, We think that there are many important, very important features and uh, there should should be some hidden here. Speaking about architect architecture, you have applications, load balancers, coordinators, the Postgres and data nodes. These are also Postgres. You have global transaction manager, GTM, and the GTM proxy. 
to not to sell uh, to not to s send the statuses to the global transaction manager and to group them for the better performance one need to say that for the coordination coordinators are postgres and the data are stored is stored in data nodes as Sergey already told, you cannot get rid of physics. So this is our stand that was made by our team. We have our own model for tests of all new releases of Postgres, and not only Postgres, but uh, other DBs. Here we've got the stand of 959, and we took uh, the Postgres SQL 9.5. And we ran two tests. All tables were uh, uh, distributed according to the replication, and we used the round robin for the work with for work with tables. Speaking about limits and constraints, uh, there are no wonders in this world. You need to pay for it, and the model, uh, the distributed model of Postgres SQL, is limiting our model and we needed to find a way to to handle these limitations so provisioning and rapid inquiry queries are winning uh, when we uh, operate with postgres sql uh, 95 but the situation was uh, slow queries is actually the same for Postgres SQL and Postgres XL. The question is why, when we started this case, we understood that uh, there is a planner in that data nodes and every coordinator has its own planner. This is a proficient planner that collects information from all nodes and creates its own plan. Then imagine you have built your plan on coordinator, you, you went for the data, you went back with the data, you processed this, the data with coordinator, uh, you worked with CIDs, and as I already said, this is our picture. Yes, Postgres XL is uh, distributed is okay for the distributed transactions it has ha for uh, tables for distributed tables uh, distributed uh, according to the replication but there are some contrasts like connections overhead meaning that you need to create a huge amount of connections for your better communication of your nodes. There is a problem of resharding. The, um, there are some features missing. You cannot make uh, cross tables uh, on uh, various nodes and it is not suit suitable for OLTP. And of course we've met new requirements from uh, our office. Then these are the requirements. We need uh, high availability and the easy cluster setup in minutes uh, because we need to work to operate in clouds. Easy cluster administration and configuration. Configuration and configurations. Easy cluster scaling. And one more new requirement, as I already told, is the cloud technology. So take a, now let's take a look at the next project. There are uh, other solutions like Patroni. And uh, I can tell you that we did not uh, go into the deep research of this solution. But we were interested in Stolon because it was initially produced for cloud technologies. Let's speak about the stolen architecture. These are three components. The first component is Keeper. Keeper is the managing procedure that is for that forks the procedure of Postgres and manages it. There are Sentinels, uh, distributed brains. 
the main component that arrives at the decision uh, on the basis of quorum of what shall be done, uh, what shall be promoted. And there is also proxy, and proxy is aware at every time where the master is. And independently of uh, what kind of proxy you will use, you will find the way to master. There are two storage types, either ETCD or console store, that should uh, uh, handle the problems uh, combined with quorums and with storage of information of uh, how is every component feeling and the client also. What are the features? I will not go into the de into details. The features are pretty standard for every high availability uh, construction. So there are the possibilities to use this in Kubernetes, in Docker. So and the like. Let's go to the invocation of commands. So, what is managed by Stalon? What uh, is the communication between Stalon uh, and Postgres? There are four main uh, commands. Stalon Keeper, Stalon Sentinel, Proxy, they're making the same for Sentinel and for Proxy. And the most interesting comment is stolen CTL. The stolen CTL is enlisting. You, you can see here the enlisted uh, commands. And the most interesting command here for us is cluster specification command. The update uh, command uh, for specification and the status command. I will speak about this command a bit later. So what's the stolen par parameters? How can you manage the cluster? The stolen cluster provides the possibility to manage several components, several parameters uh, of the whole cluster. There are sleep interval parameters, request interval, request timeout for metrics for um, every component and uh, how to send them to ETCD, point in time recovery, the PG parameters that are managing all the parameters from, is from Postgres and new config parameters. When you start some Postgres, uh, you can define what locale can be used uh, and uh, what clusters can be used. There is a perimeter at Stolon, like a standby cluster. This is a possibility to uh, use one more disaster cluster for the general cluster of Stolon. Here you can see several examples of commands of, that are used to manage the cluster. Here is, uh, for example, Stolon CTL status. You can see all the components, their statuses, whether they are dead or alive. And uh, unfortunately, I don't have a pointer, but the most interesting part is where you have figures PG wanted and PG current. These are important parameters that actually tell us how many health checks were put through for specific instances of Postgres, how many checks were sent, queries were sent and how many responses were obtained. And uh, the trace is also presented. So we were interested in that, but uh, we came across the following problem. In fact, solutions like Stellan, they have three companions. They have three instances of Postgres and uh, everything should be in three, not less than three. If, and uh, when we look at a simple scheme, we have primary two standbys, one is uh, synchronized, another is async, uh, sync standby is uh, given a name that uh, is given the first standby, but uh, let's uh, imagine that the disaster happens and the primary is down. Then standby is promoted to the synchronous standby is promoted to master, to the new primary, and uh, async standby will replace the sync standby. Still, it will make the sync standby. 
and uh, they will be waiting for the recovery of the old master as a standby cluster. And everything's great, everything works here, everything's perfect, but when we have this requirement that we need to have two nodes, then we have a problem. What is the problem? If we we'll work in synchronous replication, in replication A, Stallone will write uh, the application name in its Stallone name. And it will happen the same if the primary is down, the sync standby replaces it. But in this case, as Stallone is initially tailored to have uh, for the two letters of the cap theorem consistency and partitioning, we will not have availability, we will have this problem that uh, during the time uh, that uh, it takes to recover the old master, Stallone will put fake application name to Stallone standby name. So if it does that, then for the time of recovery of the old master, your new master will not be available for writing, so you will be reading only from the new master. Then we thought and uh, we looked that well, it's okay, but we were not 100% uh, satisfied, so we decided to pitch in, into, to chip in into this uh, situation. We decided to cross Stallone with Barman. Why Barman? Well, this is the classic architecture, and Barman, in fact, in our point of view, has one great feature. It can take wall logs through flow replication protocol, through PG receives log, uh, and in the new version it's PG receive file. So it can do it even in sync mode. So we thought, well, why not crossing our backup with uh, the solution that we have? Stallone. To do that, we had to go back to the initial code, and Sergey, in fact, uh, was part of this lengthy process, and uh, this process is still going on as the changes. Well, we first thought that uh, they are not uh, significant, but uh, we ended up in having long discussions. So we added two additional parameters. What are they? External failback sync standbys. This is a parameter that is required to additionally write into the configuration of the cluster additional synchronous replicas. And uh, parameter number two, in order to use additional replication slots, so it's specified conf configurable name. We implemented this additional replication slot names parameter. And uh, right now it looks like this. We have two nodes. We have Barman that is working first as an async replica, so it takes well logs as in an async mode in case primary is down to put application Barman's application name as a sync replica and uh, we have uh, down in recording because uh, there are no miracles usually backup is uh, located at uh, slower disks but we are working we do not lose data if uh, primary is recovered we can restore from backup but in case the old uh, the initial master is recovered uh, barman becomes async and uh, the first one becomes sync and uh, well it is all available here. It has been discussed for a long time, but well, we hoped to present it in a 080 release. In 090, hopefully, we will present it. We've run several tests, but these are not order tests as yet, so we want to add documents, order tests, and then commit, sorry, pull requests will be accepted in the general branch. 
Um, why we actually here were talking about features and uh, architecture? Well, in fact, we do not have a lot of time, and uh, on the margins of this conference, we can continue our discussion. Right now, we are working on the infrastructure of all that uh, with HA, as you might understand already. Uh, it is not very easy with HA, but uh, we are now uh, working with that in Hibernate, but uh, further on probably we will provide it in uh, GitHub, but uh, that will be more than HA. Yeah. That is it. Thank you. Well, we almost we have almost no time, so three to four questions, and then probably we will finish. Do we have any questions? Hello, my name is Sergey. I have a question to Sergey. Sergey. I'm here. You were talking. You were telling us interesting things about PG Pool. What if I open Connect to it? I open transaction. I perform two or three selects, and then I perform update. And uh, I've already sent it for standard. So you open transaction. You send select. Well, I've sent select one or two even as this is select i've sent it to standby it tied my transaction to it and then in the same connect in the sun transaction i perform update well this update will go to master how is it going to go to master if when you open a transaction and tell P to pg pool to begin it opens transactions to all the slave backends and uh, promotes them there. Next question. Person at the wall. Can you hear me? My name is Alexei. I am a developer and I'm Patron and developer. Why haven't you taken the right solution and you are trying to find you in the wrong one? In fact, the problems that are related to sync mode, they are all way known. We have a, a mode actually that perform the function you're aiming for. We have a strict sync mode when there is no availability and not strict uh, sync mode uh, that you use Kubernetes, you use stop that actually requires etcd or consuke from you. We are using Kubernetes for a year. It is not easy to run those systems uh, for Kubernetes. Uh, you can use Petroni and then you will not need anything. We actually intended to do that in Kubernetes. Petroni migrated from Guvernon project. Guvernon died, and uh, after that, two months ago, there appeared a link. Please switch to Petroni. Uh, it is not. It is not right. We actually did not intend Petroni for cloud solution. We wanted to launch it in Amazon and Kubernetes. Support is more serious even for, for Petroni. We haven't, we actually have not uh, stated that uh, it is cloud native. Well, why we decided to go away from Petroni? Well, maybe we haven't uh, read everything, maybe we missed something, but in fact your guidelines are not perfect, to put it mildly. Well, if you look at docs work for Petroni, you will find everything there. Well, I'm not saying that it is not there. We haven't found it. And uh, if you have DN2 nodes re mode, in case a sync replica is down, Petroni did the following thing. It actually picked up standby and uh, worked in standalone mode. There is one master and that's it. And uh, forget about replica. It is not back. We'll continue with one master. 
to us this approach was not very acceptable because we were we decided either not to work at all with one master or we had to uh, back up it with something at least. You will agree that uh, with one master, even you have backup with incremental val, uh, you will lose less transactions. But I can use any recovery command, and uh, we all the wall files are stored at S3. And if all nodes uh, are down in this cluster, well, there is one detail. Wall log is only copied when it is completed. If it is not completed, it will not be copied there. And then. If you lose master, if this wall log was not sent and it will not be sent to backup solution, you will lose less transactions. You think replica replication if you don't want to lose transactions. Well, in regime with two nodes, Patroni will be working, it will use one node. No, it is not so. We have two modes. So first is what you describe and the other is, well, it actually tells us that we have a strict mode. Well, please uh, visit our masterclass on Wednesday for Petroni. Thank you. We can invite you to ours. We can actually continue this discussion on the margin because uh, probably we should not uh, continue this conversation here. Thank you, Alexei. Short question about Peter Bull. Well, some time ago, eight to ten years ago, we tested it for balancing and uh, we came across the following problem. We had a lot of stored procedures, both writing and reading. And after that, the problem was that uh, we could not uh, name all of them. The reading to perform the good balancing, we had to actually change uh, their configuration in config manually. So this is uh, an obvious problem and uh, we could not develop the application. Have you improved it? Well, no, in fact, the functions of your stored procedure are not uh, important. Uh, they are not balanced. You need to put them into whitelist uh, for them to be balanced. So I cannot uh, put uh, config to a database. No, uh, it is all stored in the text file of config. Thank you. Thank you for your questions. You can use uh, you can use the regular mode to put in this function. Please be back after the break. Uh, we will listen about the features of monitoring. Thank you.